Well, as you may recall, we set up this visit to talk more about your family history and recommendations for you. Yes. After we met last month, I uh, reviewed your history with a colleague, Shannon Moore, who's a genetic counselor, to see if there are any recommendations for you and your family. Okay. Based on the family history, you may be at increased risk. Now, normally, a cousin with uterine cancer would not elevate my concern about cancer in you. However, there are some red flags, so to speak, for inherited cancer in your family. We see multiple relatives with cancer on the same side of the family in several generations. Also, family members have had both uh, endometrial and colon cancers, which, as I'll talk more about in a minute, can sometimes be seen together in an inherited cancer syndrome. The other thing we notice is that some family members affected with cancer have had it at younger ages of onset than usual. When we look at these things together, it suggests the possibility of an inherited or genetic cause for the cancer in your family. But colon cancer is pretty common, right? And I didn't think it was a big deal to have two people in the family with colon cancer at their ages. Well, you are correct. Colon cancer is not uncommon. And your father and grandmother were not unusually young when they had that cancer. But having two close relatives with colon cancer and one with endometrial cancer on the same side of the family is what I have concerns about. And your cousin's uterine cancer diagnosis is younger than the typical age of onset. I thought so too. So do you think I'm going to develop cancer too? Not necessarily, but the family history puts you at increased risk. In particular, the combination of colon and, and uterine cancer is suggestive of a genetic condition called Lynch syndrome. Lynch syndrome. Correct. Uh, this is a condition that can be passed down in families and can cause several types of cancer, particularly colorectal, uterine, and other gastrointestinal and urinary tract cancers. People with Lynch syndrome are at a higher risk to develop one or more of these cancers, but not everyone with Lynch syndrome gets cancer. So what is the next step? How do I find out if I'm at risk or not? 